To say that I had the best time in Mexico City would be an understatement. There was fabulous food, delicious drinks, thrilling wrestling match, glittery drag shows, and boundless art. But most importantly, my first time in Ciudad de México was filled with good friends and meeting locals with beautiful hearts. But we'll leave the food and drinks in the next video. This week, I'll show you all the wonderful things to see as well as cultural and fun things to do in Mexico City. First things first, Polanco is the neighborhood where you should stay. Today, I am exploring Polanco area of Mexico City. Polanco is definitely more of a luxury district. There's a lot of like diplomats and embassies. It's a bit up on the northern part of National Museum of Anthropology. If you want sort of a refined and sophisticated experience, this is the area where you want to stay at. And so we're visiting a couple of like concept stores, gourmet restaurants, and uh, design shops. Let's start with what to see. The central square of Mexico City is Zócalo, or today's Plaza de la Constitución. Before Spain's colonization of Mexico, the Aztecs used this place as a ceremonial site. It is framed by Mexico City Metropolitan Cathedral, National Palace, federal district buildings, and the old portal of Mercaderes. From here, you can wander through Centro and Centro Histórico. This is one of the main streets in the city called Francisco Madero. It's pedestrian only. Take a few minutes and stop by the Grand Hotel to snap a photo of the Art Nouveau Dome. The immense stained glass Tiffany ceiling designed by French artisan Jacques Coubert is accompanied by a Louis XV style chandelier in the lobby and beautiful wrought iron railings on the first three floors. Then walk over to Palacio de Bellas Artes, which is the Palace of Fine Arts, where many call it the Cathedral of Art in Mexico. I didn't have a chance to enter, but you'll want to climb up to the second floor for famous murals completed by Mexican artists. Looking for some fantastic live mariachi music? Also in Centro Histórico, there's Plaza Garibaldi, or home of the mariachi music. At any time of the day, you'll see mariachi bands waiting to bust out a tune. Right now, we're at the Mercado Artesanal, and it's basically my dream come true. Lots of artisanal dresses, fabrics, textiles, and handicrafts. Now we move from Centro to Polanco. There's Museo Sumaya, which is a free entry museum named after the wife of Carlos Slim, the Mexican business magnet. The iconic structure is nonetheless bewildering to the eye. Thousands of silver hexagons make up the breathtaking architecture designed by Mexican architect Fernando Romeo, who was Slim's son-in-law. The museum houses more than 66,000 pieces of artworks created by Rodin, Da Vinci, Dali, Monet, and many Mexican artists. This is the Umex Museum, right next to Sumaya. Neighboring the Sumaya, Museo Humex is one of the largest contemporary art museums in Latin America. Funded by one of the most prominent juice companies in Mexico, Grupo Humex, the refined gallery boasts creative works by Warhol, Damien Hirst, and many more. This is the Anthropology Museum, which is one of the most important museums in Latin America. Local Mexicans will proudly present Museo Nacional de Antropología as without question the most quintessential museum in Latin America. It thoroughly showcases Mexican art, history, life, and culture in the most comprehensive manner. At the entrance, you'll see a massive pillar fountain referred to as El Palaguas, 
or the umbrella. It's a symbol of our bond with nature. This is the largest and the most popular museum in the country, as it contains archaeological and anthropological artifacts from the pre-Columbian era. To change the pace a bit, after an abundance of art in Polanco, you might want to do a little shopping. Then stop by She New Perfumes, a concept store where the company infuses premier perfumery with aromatic botany. Lotions, candles, perfumes, each makes the most fragrant souvenir. We are at the She New showroom, which is all about higher fragrance and uh, perfumes, organic candles, and over there you're gonna see lotions and body wash. So this is super cool. This is the Mercado Median, which is the flower market and food on the other side of the street. They're also selling fruits and vegetables. If you find yourself in the Roma neighborhood, check out Mercado Medien, where fresh produce and beautiful flowers are being sold. It is also nicknamed La Pequeña Habana, which means Little Havana. Looking for something fun to do on Friday night? Head on over to Roma's Guild Tonight Club where a drag show will cheer up anyone in town. Cher, Whitney, Celine, the spectacular performances are essentially high production shows that quite literally belong on cruise ships. Guild hosts different themes on various nights of the week, but the drag shows on Friday nights are absolute fabulosity and total blasts. <laughs> We're at the famous Castillo. Look at the view. The Chapultepec Castle, or Castillo de Chapultepec, means on the hill of the grasshopper in the Nahuatl language. Situated in the Grandio Chapultepec Park, the castle was originally a sacred location for the Aztecs, and it eventually shifted to the home of military academy, imperial residence, presidential residence, an observatory, and the National Museum of History. Reserve a few hours for your visit since the castle is immense, boasting enormous art and various sections to stroll through and admire. A trip to Mexico City is even more thrilling with a live match of Lucha Libre. The Mexican wrestling literally translates to free fight. It was originated in Mexico and has now shifted to an entertaining show and battles with bright masks, high flying throws and loud falls. When you purchase tickets online, there's a bus tour that gives free masks and a ride to Arena Coliseo via a double-decker bus. During the match, fans will scream otra, otra, which means again, or beso, beso, which means kiss. At this match, we particularly rooted for our favorite wrestler, Pikachu. The Frida Kahlo Museum is located outside of city center in the neighborhood of Coyacan. Known as the Blue House or La Casa Azul, this is home where Kahlo grew up, then eventually lived with her husband. Later, the iconic Mexican painter passed away in a room on the upper floor of the house. During the visit, you'll see her paintings, her rooms, kitchen, and gaze at several of her paintings. 
Estamos en Coyoacan. Just 30 minutes away from Centro. It is the place of the coyotes. While you're in Coyoacan to visit the Frida Museum, you'll see that the charming neighborhood's main square is delightful and full of allure. Definitely stroll through Mercado de Coyacan to shop for local handicrafts, clothing, and souvenirs to bring home. The market came to life in 1922 and has since then become one of Mexico City's signature mercados. This is Solchimico! Right next to Lucha Libre on this list, cruising through the canals of Xochimilco is another exciting must-do, especially for any special celebrations like birthday or bachelor bachelorette parties. This working-class neighborhood is situated an hour away from city center. The canals were originally part of a water support system built by the Aztecs. There are mariachi bands that you can hire for live performances. Since it's BYOB, make sure to bring your own beers and tequila for a memorable experience. Right now, we're at Teotihuacan. It takes about an hour of car ride to get here. You also need to not have the fear of heights. This is the first time where I'm traveling and I realize I can't do something because I do have a fear of heights. To climb up those stairs is definitely very challenging and quite scary. So I decided to stay down here in the grounds. Do plan on having a couple of hours here to walk around and take pictures. If you are not like me and you are okay with really steep stairs without railing, then you can go up there and take some photos. A trip to Mexico City wouldn't be complete without a day trip to Teotihuacan, the ancient Mesoamerican city located approximately an hour from Mexico City by car. This is where you can see both Pyramid of the Sun and Pyramid of the Moon. From 1 CE to 500 CE, Teotihuacan was the biggest city in the Americas with 125,000 population and operated as an incredibly advanced civilization on Earth. Put on your walking shoe since the 8 square mile of land is vast, as it showcases the Avenue of the Dead, various murals and residences for multi-families. Make sure you reserve a ride back after your visit so you're not stuck out there in the middle of nowhere. If you have some time left on your trip, I highly suggest taking a few photos near Biblioteca Vasconcelos for those who love a stunning Instagram post. Situated in downtown, this mega library honors Mexican philosopher and politician Jose Vasconcelos. The use of interior space and the design of bookshelves mounted throughout the library is beyond a magnificent sight for any bookworm. Spend a few quiet moments here and reflect upon your splendid memories in one of the best cities in the world. 